My first question is for Dr. Paul. We've heard from others of their support of a federal marriage amendment. Would you support a, a, an amendment to the U.S. Constitution defining marriage as the union of one man and one woman? No, I, I have taken a position that I would not support. I, fit, I, I support DOMA, the Defense of Marriage Act, but uh, I would prefer under our system of laws that uh, all these problems be taken care of in a constitutional manner, which I would uh, defer to, to the states. But actually, I would go even a little bit further. Me personally, my personal beliefs, although it's not likely to be achieved in my lifetime, is traditionally throughout our, our uh, Christian, uh, Judeo Christian history, it was usually dealt with by the <coughs> church. And I think the reason we fight and fume over this is because there's, we have too much government everywhere. So I would say that the church should make this decision. That's the most important place to determine determine uh, marriage. When you think about in the Old Testament when uh, the, the God that led the people out of Egypt uh, uh, was not a king, they didn't have a king, and then when they got to the Holy Land, uh, they, uh, they had judges. They didn't have kings dictating and ruling. But the family dealt with this, and the family dealt with marriages. But they had a judge to determine this. Matter of fact, when the people came to Samuel and said, look, we need more rules and more laws. We want more government to tell us what to do, and, and we, we need more, more of this. Samuel was old and ready to retire, and he says, no, that's a bad mistake. You don't need more rules and more government. You, do, you don't need this. The government will overreact. And today, I think this is what has happened to us. We have deferred to, to, to the federal government. We have way too much government. We should go in the other directions. Before you know it, the next step, what if the next step is, wouldn't it be wonderful if the United Nations defined marriage? I don't want to go up that way. I want to go back down all the way to the family and the church. Believe me, it would be a happier and more peaceful world if we went in that direction rather than asking the government and asking the king to solve all these problems. We need the family to deal with it, and we can take our message and learn something from the Old Testament, how there was such a strong emphasis on the patriarchal society and the disputes settled by judges, rather than looking for big government. Our final question. Every one of the six of you have talked about the importance are preserving life. And nothing takes life more than the declaration of war. I would like to hear from you because nothing frightens a mother more than watching her son or daughter go off. Their pride in their country, but their fear for their child. What is, can you define the moral justification for war? You can use Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Syria, what is the moral justification? Representative Paul. You know, the, um, the early church struggled with this. I mean, Christ came, Christ taught about peace, and uh, Christ was to be the Prince of Peace, uh, and uh, we were to defend that. But early on, and the church struggled with this, and uh, St. Augustine came up with the uh, principles of the just war. I believe in them. I think we should follow though from a religious viewpoint, but we have a constitution that is very clear to guide us to try to prevent these wars. And that is that we don't go to war without a declaration. The wars that we have fought since World War II are all illegal, unconstitutional, immoral, and all were unwinnable, and it was tragic. It was tragic because we did it by failing the rule of law, and the tragedy now of these wars of the past 10 years Ten years and we have been so complacent, it added $4 trillion to our national debt. Uh, 8,500 Americans have been killed in these wars. 44,000 have come home wounded and crippled. Hundreds of thousands are looking for help. And we want to blind ourselves to this. And it isn't in our national defense. It was mischief. It's getting involved where we don't need to be involved. I think it is a it is an utter tragedy of what's happening. And if you want to talk about a family life, there has to be somebody in this audience that has been the bearer of bad news, either a loved one lost or a loved one crippled. And it's on and on. I had one soldier come to me the other day, and he was, he was so against the wars, and he spent three or four tours over there. 
And he says, I lost so many buddies and I don't know why we were there and there's no signs of progress over there. But he says, now I'm losing my buddies to suicide. The wars destroy the family, undermine the family, as does economic climate. The bad economics and war is two most destructive things to the family, and we ought to concentrate on that, and we can't concentrate on the economics unless you look at the business cycle, why we have inflation, busts, and booms. Otherwise, we will continue on a downhill path.